A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to our National Silver Academy NSA E-Nugget Series, An Active Mind is a Healthy Mind, The Power of Weiqi by Nanyang Technological University, supported by Confucius Institute as part of the National Silver Academy. My name is James Lee. I'm currently serving as the Vice President of Singapore Weiqi Association. It is my pleasure to be here with you today. Hopefully you enjoy the talk as much as I enjoy making this for you. Now, before we start with our main topic of the day, let's do a quick poll together uh, on Facebook. First of all, are we able to find references to Wei Qi in movies, books, and or drama series before? Uh, if you have done it, if you have found references to Wei Qi before, please kindly click on yes. If not, please click on no. Submit your answer through our Facebook poll. And let's see how the majority of us will respond to this poll together. Now, personally, uh, during my student days, I, I was often captivated and fascinated by uh, ancient uh, historical references, uh, in whether it's in China or ancient Japan or even Korea. For example, uh, as a student, I used to read a lot about uh, San Guo Yan Yi, the Romance of Three Kingdoms. And uh, well, while I was reading through the novels or even watching the drama series on TV, I'll often find scenes uh, of historical figures such as Cao Cao, for example, or even Guan Yu uh, playing a mysterious board game with uh, stones on the board, whether it's black stones or white stones. And while they're playing those matches, they'll often be discussing uh, very important policies and important stratagems with their generals or with their advisors, etc. So that, that really caught my attention uh, while I was a very young student. Uh, when I was watching some Korean drama series, oh, <laughs> from what I see uh, so far in Facebook poll, uh, majority seems to have not been able to find references to Wei before. Uh, okay, that would be very, very interesting. So I'll, I'll expect that maybe for today, it will be something new to a majority of our audience. And hopefully uh, you'll find this mysterious board game uh, refreshing and also rather enlightening because it's actually surprisingly a very easy to play game that you can pick it up almost immediately. So uh, after today's talk, I sincerely hope that we can all enjoy a good game of Weiqi together with whether it's with our friends or family at home. Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's move on to the next slide. Now, an active mind is a healthy mind, the power of Wei Qi. The main highlights of today's presentation will include the basic introduction to Wei Qi history and Singapore Wei Qi Association. Uh, we will also be going through some of the basic rules to play a game of Wei Qi, as well as exploring the potential benefits of playing Wei Qi and inculcating it as part of our lifestyle uh, so that we can grow and cultivate oneself. All right, so let's move on to the next slide. Now, uh, to many of us who might not have seen or even heard of Wei Qi before, actually Wei Qi was created in ancient China more than 4,000 years ago. It was considered to be one of the most ancient mind spot ever created by mankind. So this was an amazing creation indeed. Now, according to historians, Emperor Yao was the first Chinese ever recorded to have created the game of Wei Qi so that he could engage his mischievous son uh, and encourage him to pick up a learning or treat learning as seriously as he could using this game of Wei Qi. Or in Chinese, literally, we term it as the surrounding game. Now, the word Wei means to surround and Qi means strategy. So the whole game is evolving around the concept of surrounding something. Now, despite its deep roots in East Asia, Wei Qi today is enjoyed by millions in over 80 countries around the world, uh, such as Southeast Asia, we have Singapore, we have Malaysia, players in Thailand, we have also players in Vietnam, Indonesia, and so on. Not to mention lots and lots of fans of Wei Qi in East Asia, such as China, Korea, uh, uh, Japan, or Taipei, Taipei, for example, and also European countries too. So hopefully, uh, once we pick up the game today, you will have the opportunity to play not only Wei Qi with our friends and family at home, we can also get to challenge uh, and make new friends abroad. Now, internationally, Wei Qi is also known as Wei Qi in China, especially in Chinese-speaking regions. 
Uh, as I suggested just now, the word way means to surround and qi means to uh, strategize uh, that process of surrounding your opponent's stones. Now, in Japan, they term it as ego, which refers to the same thing, actually, just that it's all uh, pronounced in Japanese. And in Korea, we call it paduk, which is also the same thing as wei qi, just that we pronounce it in Korean and so on. And in European countries, to simplify the whole name, they call it Go, G-O. Uh, it's actually a simplified name from Ego because the Japanese were one of the first few people to introduce this wonderful mind sport to the, uh, to the West, whether it's European countries or even in Americas. Now, there was even a famous manga and anime series on Ego known as Hikaru no Go or Qining Wang in Chinese. Uh, it was very, very popular many, many years back that uh, the anime series was one of the highest rating series uh, during those days. Now, last year, just last year alone, there was also a Chinese drama series on Mango TV, uh, specially created in, uh, in, in respect to Hikaru no Go. So feel free to explore this series, Qi Hun, on, on, on YouTube.com or Hikaru no Go on YouTube.com. And hopefully you enjoy the series as much as we did too. Now, Singapore Weighty Association was created and established back in 1981. And since then, uh, we were determined to promote and uh, cultivate the art of Weighty in Singapore, uh, starting with the youth and then to the working adults and subsequently to the young at heart. Hopefully, we can engage everyone in Singapore uh, to, to play this simple yet very perplexingly fun mind sport. And, by playing this fun game, we can also get to appreciate uh, Asian culture from a totally different perspective. So this was what Singapore Weighty Association was all about. Now, something special about our association was that uh, we preferred to engage our audiences, to engage our participants, whether you're coming for events or causes or training, uh, bilingually. So um, more often or not, we do our our communications and trainings in Mandarin, but we will also encourage our audiences and students to come to our courses in English, where we do it in English as well. Uh, because this way, we can not only engage our students who are mainly Chinese speaking, but also uh, English speaking audiences as well, so that we will not miss any Singaporean who might be interested to learn the game of Weiji together with us. So therefore, you will see often uh, students that are attending training under Singapore Weiji Association, well, not only consists of Chinese-speaking students, but also uh, Malay-speaking and Indian-speaking students as well. So we welcome all to explore the game of Weiji together with us uh, under Singapore Weiji Association. Now, Singapore Weiji Association also actively engages schools, uh, whether it's primary schools, secondary schools, or even uh, JCs and polytechnics, as well as universities. Uh, so that we can uh, engage interest groups uh, and student groups within those institutions to pick up the game as part of their CCA, as part of their enrichment uh, lifestyle, to enrich their learning journey uh, within their studying years, and as well as to uh, allow them to have, to equip them with proper technical, technical skills to participate in competitions while representing their schools, sometimes representing the country overseas as well. So this, this is what we are actively doing now and we hope to do more in the coming years to come. Singapore Weighty Association also actively engages the community in organizing big events so that we can get more Singaporeans involved. We can get the attention of many of our heartlanders uh, to pay more attention to the art of Weighty. So you see that, for example, we have one event back in 2014, Bros Plaza. Uh, we had this young gentleman, Mr. Kwa Jiehui, who played with over 52 players within the span of two and a half hours. And therefore, uh, by completing all 52 matches within two hours, he uh, not only created a new record in the Singapore book, Guinness Book of Records, he also has uh, broken uh, the most number of games played within a period of time uh, in the record as well. So this, this is just one example of some of the things that we do and we hope to do more uh, with more and more partners such as uh, other non-profit organizations such as KDF, for example, Kidney Dialysis Foundation. We also engage very actively with the People Association and also uh, other groups so that we can uh, 
get more, more in touch with uh, heartlanders uh, in community clubs and so on. So if you happen to have any uh, ideas and suggestions, please feel free to leave in the comment page also. Singapore Wasey Association also uh, organizes competitions, both locally and internationally. Now, in this case, we have uh, an event. In this picture, we have an event where we have uh, players from China and Taipei uh, gathering together at China Cultural Center, right at Victoria Street. So we, we had players and we, we gathered youths from many, many countries together. We also organized a competition just two years ago at Asian Civilization Museum named as the first Southeast Asia Gold Congress. So um, such events right, were often organized to help raise the competitive level of our players, not only the youth players, but also our senior players as well. Uh, we are also uh, using Singapore status as a hub to organize and train up the overall technical, technical level of Southeast Asia talents so that uh, once in a while we can gather talents from all over the world to Singapore to explore, to discuss, as well as to collaborate on potential uh, weighty uh, collaborations and projects uh, as, as well. So this is just one example, and we hope to do more in the coming years to come. Locally, we often do uh, competitions for students, for working adults, as well as for the young at heart. We have uh, up to 26 competitions per year. Uh, not, not just in community clubs, like what we see in the picture here, Wompo Community Club. We also organize events uh, at our own clubhouses. We have two clubhouses, by the way, one at uh, Bishan Community Club Level 2 and one at ICB Enterprise House, right in the middle of Middle Road, beside Mugis Plus. So we also have a collaboration with schools so that we can do competitions uh, within the school premise. Uh, we, we also did a competition at the NTU premise as well. So uh, these are some of the many projects that we often, uh, often organize uh, for the past few years. So feel free to join us for our many events uh, once we pick the game up from today's uh, NSA eNugget series. Now to start off to play a game, we will first need to prepare some very basic equipment. Now in this case, as you can see in front of us, there are two very important equipment that we need to have. Number one, the weighty board, which is typically squarish in design. All right, it's a, it's a very big square with many, many lines within. And then we will also require some stones, whether it's black stones or white stones. They are also very crucial to start a good game of weighty altogether. Now, uh, back in the old days, when our founding fathers, uh, before they even founded Singapore Weighty Association, they had to settle with uh, buttons, buttons on our shirts to play a good game of Weighty altogether. But today, fortunately, we are able to easily uh, inquire as well as to purchase a good set of Weighty from anywhere in Singapore, whether it's offline or online. So once you've got the set ready, we are, uh, we are almost ready to go. So now, without further ado, let's get started with the rules. So you can see in front of you, there's this picture here. We have three potatoes surrounding one tomato. Okay, so the spirit of the picture already explains the main essence of the game. So let's move on to the rules of the game. Let me adjust the screen a little bit. Okay, now welcome back. Now, as you can see in front of you, I'm using an especially small weighty board to do a quick demonstration as to how we can start and play a proper game of weighty together. And hopefully uh, by sharing this with you, we can easily start a good quality match with anyone in the family or whether it's with your neighbors or anyone online, okay? Now to play a game, please take note that everyone plays one move at a time, okay? And the Blackstone, the player taking the black stone shall start first by placing his or her first move on the board. Now, please don't worry as to uh, or be overly concerned like, oh, where should I place my first move? Just play anywhere you like, okay? So let's say the black stone plays somewhere around here. Now, if you notice, right, the black stone has placed its stone in a very particular manner. It is very important to take note that the stones are always placed on the intersection of the line. 
like this. Okay, and the white stones can play anywhere he or she wants to. So let's say the white stone played here, and I hope you also agree with me that the white stone has also placed its stone on the intersection of the lines. So these are some of the more traditional and proper way of placing your moves uh, in the game. So subsequently, right, you will be able to observe two ways of placements. Now the first way uh, is where you will see stones aligned together in a straight line manner. All right, we call these connected groups of stones. Connected groups of stones. Now for the white stones in this manner, it's diagonally aligned or a little bit distance away from each other. So for the white stones in this case, they are not connected together for the time being. So from what we can see now, the stones in yellow, they are all linked together as one group. The stones marked in red, they are not connected together for the time being. So these are very important observations for first time players to the game of Wei Qi. Okay, and I hope you also agree that no one plays their stones uh, within the boxes itself. This is a, a wrong way of placing your stones. Please be very careful when you're playing this game with your family and friends at home. And no one plays a stone outside the board. Huh? This is also a very bad mistake, often played by first time players. So please bear that in mind when you're starting your first game with your friends. Now, subsequently, you'll be able to identify and differentiate that there's a big difference between connected groups of stones and stones that are not connected together for the time being. Like in this case, stones ABC, they are all linked together as one group of stones. And stones DEF, they are not connected together for the time being because it's not straight line, it's diagonally aligned. You see that? Okay, so bearing that in mind, we can move on to the next set of rules, which we call liberties. Now, liberties are the main and basic conditions of survival for stones that are placed in the game. Now, in this case, for the stone marked in yellow, it will have four liberties, which are defined by four straight lines protruding out of the stone. In this case, it will be one, two, three, and four straight lines. Therefore, termed as having four liberties. Now, for the stone marked in red, which is aligned to the side, it will only have three liberties because of the three straight lines coming out of the stone. As for the stone in the corner, marked in green, it will only have two straight lines and therefore having only two liberties in this case. Now, with more liberties, obviously, you have a better chance of survival in the game. And with more liberties, you won't get bullied or attacked that easily. Now, the definition of being bullied or attacked, which will mean that the white stones will take the opportunity to surround you. So let's say the white stone plays here, one stone at a time, all right? Then the stone in green, right, will be weakened a little bit. In fact, it only has one liberty left. If left untouched and the white stone was allowed to play an additional move, then the stone in green will no longer have any liberties left. And therefore, you could feel free to take that stone away from the game. With your hand, you can take it away and then put it to the side of the board. For example, if you're playing this game at home with your family and friends. If you're playing it online, uh, it will dis just disappear by default due to its programming. Now, in this case, for the stone in red, you can surround it with three white stones. One, two, and three. And without any liberties left, the stone in red will no longer have the qualification to remain in the game. And therefore, you can again take this stone away from the game and place it to the side of the board as a form of record. Okay. Now, for the stone in yellow, we could capture it by surrounding all its liberties by covering all the straight lines. And with zero liberties left, again, you can feel free to take that stone away from the game. So this is how we capture, and this is the process of capturing. So just bear in mind, if your stones have liberties, it can still stay in the game. If your stones have no liberties, it can no longer survive. Okay. Now, on the other hand, assuming we were able to surround our opponent's stones like this, leaving this stone in green with only one liberty left, we often term it as under attack. When the stone is under attack, then we, we need to pay some attention to it because he only has one liberty left. If left unattended, then the white stones could feel free to take that stone away. 
via capturing. So therefore, the Blackstones could consider linking together in a straight line manner, thus connecting it as one group. And as one group, you could potentially build more liberties for yourself, one, two, and three, and therefore improving its chances of surviving in the game. And you could even consider connecting together with other groups of stones in a straight line fashion, like this. And as one gigantic group of stones, you could even have more liberties. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight liberties. And obviously with more liberties, you can uh, spend a longer time developing the game uh, together with other groups of stones in the game, okay? Now, please take note that when your stones are getting surrounded and under attack, Stones that are aligned diagonally will not help that much. In this case, even though the black stone is in very close proximity to that stone in blue, it is unfortunately in a diagonal fashion. Now, when it's aligned in a diagonal fashion, it will still get removed and separated away from the other stones sooner or later. So when we're playing this match at home, please be very careful and be very mindful to the differences between straight line and diagonal line relationships between stones, okay? So bearing that in mind, let's move on to the next set of rules. When we have stones surrounding a certain area, you will see that this spot, this vacuum over here, uh, belongs to the black stone for the time being. Now for the white stones, right, I can play anywhere I want. I can play here, I can play uh, here, I can play there, anywhere I want. But if I want to put a white stone over here, Unfortunately, the white stone will not be able to do that because it will have zero liberties left. If I place a white stone in a random place, at the very least, I still have liberties for that white stone. One, two, three, and four. But if I put a white stone in this spot over here, I will have zero liberties left, which is actually against the rules. So we have uh, this rule of the forbidden point that forbids us from placing a suicidal move inside this area marked in yellow. So please bear that in mind when you're playing the game. But there are some minor exceptions. Let's take a look at this one. Now, for example, we have three black stones already surrounding one white stone over here. So this white stone is unfortunately left with one liberty. So if the black stones wants to exercise his right to play a stone here, he or she could do so. Now, the reason being, you could capture that stone in red. That makes uh, the whole thing legal. Okay, so in simple sense, as long as you can capture something, feel free to do so. All right, the forbidden rule or the forbidden point will no longer apply in this case because I could capture that white stone. Okay, so bearing that understanding, I hope you will agree with me that the white stones could easily take the black stone by placing this one white stone over here. You see that? Okay, because that stone was left with one liberty in the first place. Now, similarly, the black stones could also place one black stone over here because all three white stones were also left with one liberty and therefore it is totally legal to do so. And similarly, the black stones could play one stone here too because all both white stones were only left with one liberty. So it's no longer a forbidden point. Okay, so please remember, as long as they have only one liberty left, you can feel free to exercise your right to capture those stones. And therefore it's no longer illegal. Okay, so these are the four main basic sets of rules. And understanding these four basic sets of rules, we could actually start appreciating and even start playing a good game with one another. So let's go through this demonstration match together. Now, if you're playing with your friend and family at home, uh, you can first decide who takes the black stone or white stone. For a start, all right, for first-time players and uh, new friends, you can just simply do a scissor, paper, stone, scissor, paper, stone to decide who shall take the black stone or white stone. Just remember, the, the player who's taking the black stone shall start first, and he or she shall play the first move anywhere he or she wants. Okay, so let's say the black stone plays a random move somewhere around here. And then the white stone follows, and then the black stone continues, and then the white stone follows. Suddenly, the black stone plays here. Now, if you realize 
we have three black stones attempting to surround one little white stone over here, which makes this one white stone a little bit threatened with only one liberty left. So obviously, we need to pay some attention uh, to that one white stone over there. If we were to ignore it and play somewhere else, unfortunately, the black stones could happily take that stone away as a form of capturing. So therefore, the white stones decided to escape first, as what we had discussed a very short while ago. By linking together in a straight line manner, we could link these two stones as one group and therefore boosting its liberties to become three liberties. And for now, uh, these stones in yellow will not die so easily. Okay, now next, the black stones decided to play here. Again, these black stones have decided to surround that one little white stone. This white stone is now threatened with one liberty. So we need to pay a little bit more attention to the stone in blue because it's now in trouble. If we play somewhere else, then the black stones could take the opportunity to take that stone away. So therefore, most of the time, we will want to escape by linking the stones together as one group in a straight line manner. Okay, please bear in mind, uh, this doesn't help uh, the white stone very much because in a diagonal fashion, you are not connected together. And therefore, the black stones could still capture your stone sooner or later. So please be very careful when you're playing your match at home or online. So the white stones play here. And now the black stone decided to link its stones together in a straight line manner like this. So this group is now connected together as one group. Now the white stone decided to attack that one little black stone over there. This black stone is now left with one liberty. Now, obviously, uh, we will want to try escaping by putting an, or participating an additional stone here, linking it together as one group. And I hope you also uh, could observe by now, in the typical game of Wei Qi, right, we don't shift the stones around like uh, other chess games, like international chess, or even Xiang Qi, where you have pieces that could be more mobile in nature, in design, and you can jump pieces around, you can, uh, you can shift straight or backwards, for example. But in the game of Wei right, all pieces are stationary in design, which means they don't shift around, they don't move. All right? The only way you can improve the content of the game is by participating new stones into the game, okay? such as like this. Okay? So this way, uh, the stones in red will have more liberties. But unfortunately, due to the near proximity to the edge of the board, the stones in red right, will find themselves easily surrounded by the white stones because there's nowhere else to escape to. Did you see that? So ultimately, the white stones could capture one group of black stones like this. So this is an unfortunate event, but that's part of the game. Okay, so the black stones move on and play somewhere else. And then the white stones dig like this. The black stones play here. The white stones play here. The black stones defended. And then the white stones found this stone to be under attack because it has only two liberties left and it's also rather near to the edge of the board. So therefore, the white stones also decided to link its stones together as one group. Now, currently you see that all these white stones over here are connected together as one gigantic group of stones, which obviously has a lot of liberties to work with. So it's very secure and very safe. Now the black stones decided to play somewhere else by linking his stones together as well. So both players are playing very, very safely and conservatively. And then the white stones played here, the black stones played here, and the white stones played like this. Now, I'm using a very small weighty board to demonstrate this whole match. So therefore, you will realize that the game is almost done. Now, in this case, right, when you're observing a match or when you're playing a match yourself, you will realize that in one stage or another, you will have many, many stones working together to help you occupy a certain area of the board. In this case, for the white stones, it will be this area to the right side. Now, for the black stones, they are also doing something similar. They are using many, many black stones to occupy this area of the board under the black stones control. All right. Now, there is always this uh, room or space for both players to dispute your territory. So this 
is what the white stones are hoping to get, uh, my territory, and this is what the black stones are hoping to get. But if the black stones tries to dispute by going into your territory, uh, the white stones could consider eliminating those stones. For example, like this, for example, like this, for example, like this, until a stage where the black stones found it almost meaningless to continue, then he or she can consider to pass. Now by passing, it will mean that you're willing to pass your turn to your opponents. I have no place else to play and therefore I allow you to continue on my behalf. You can continue. Now, once he or she passes, then it will be white stone to play. So the white stone also found it rather curious to, to play into black stone's territory. But ultimately, due to the sheer number of black stones already in place, it makes things rather easy for the black stones to capture those invading stones as well. So ultimately, the white stones will also realize that there's nothing much meaningful left to play. So the white stones can also consider passing. When both players passed, the, this game will officially end and we can start to conclude the result of the match. Now I'm going to demonstrate to you how we normally count uh, uh, the, the points of the game. Now first we count the intersection of the intersection points of white stones territory. In this case, it will be one, two, three, and four intersection points, plus the total of total number of stones captured during the course of the game. In this case, the white stones managed to capture 10 stones. According to my record, it was 10 stones. So in total, it will have 14 points. Okay. Now for the black stones, it will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight intersection points plus uh, the total number of nine captured stones. Nine stones captured during the course of the game. So in total, the black stones will have 17 points. So by comparing uh, both points, you will see that the black stones will have won this match by having three points extra. Okay, so this is how you can count and tabulate the, the final score when both players have no meaningful places left to play. Okay, so I hope by going through this simple demonstration, uh, our friends at home, uh, our dear audiences at home can take the opportunity to pick up this wonderful mind spot and to have some fun sessions with your family, neighbors and friends at home. Okay, so uh, with that, we shall move on to the next part of our presentation today. Okay, let me adjust the screen a little bit. So in this case, uh, after getting acquainted with the rules, let's move on to the next segment. Now, uh, some of the benefits of playing Wei Qi, whether you are a student or working adult or a senior resting or uh, uh, having uh, uh, seeking a, an active lifestyle at home, uh, it can be a potentially very beneficial and fun game because it has very simple rules to understand and learn. That helps to develop concentration, foster creativity and broaden our imagination. It is also very useful in enticing discussions and communication between people in society. We play the game according to our own intentions. So all wins and losses are our own responsibility. And we will eventually have to evaluate and critique our performance during the game and match. This is good training in terms of controlling our feelings and emotions that are necessary for the development of character and can help us inculcate a level of self-consciousness that will naturally lead to a sense of balance and clarity of thought. Therefore, uh, many grandmasters attain a very high level of self-realization while playing a good game or training uh, Wei Qi for a good game with their opponents or their friends and so on. Now, Wei Qi is a game of freedom in which you can play on any intersection on the board where we create shapes. There is freedom of expression and creativity missing from many other games, mainly aiming to destroy or overwhelm the over opposing side. Uh, therefore, participants in a good game of Wei Qi often find themselves in a very relaxed state of mind while enjoying a good game at the same time. By analyzing each move your opponent plays, you can understand and also appreciate their flow of thought. 
Sometimes we can also even become able to guess their feelings and emotions while they are playing those moves. By understanding and respecting each other, we naturally learn the etiquette of playing Weiqi. So finally, we have come to our Q&A uh, and I hope you have enjoyed the presentation thus far. Uh, if you have any question whatsoever, please feel free to leave it in our Facebook comments and I will try to uh, answer for you as quickly as I can. I can see here is that Weiqi is for all ages, seniors or mainly to younger generations. Now, uh, to answer this question, I just want to comment that Weiqi is definitely suitable for all ages, whether you are a, a, a very young student or a young adult, a working adult, or even a senior citizen. Uh, it's never too late to pick up the game of Weiqi because it's absolutely simple to learn and uh, perplexingly engaging uh, to progress when you want to improve further by practicing with other people, uh, whether through events organized by Singapore Weiqi Association or just uh, do self-training at home, when it, whether you're, you're playing online uh, through online platforms as well. Uh, for younger students, they, they often pick up the game as a form of enrichment, uh, as to boost their, their, some of their learning experiences in school. For younger adults, it's also a very good tool to, to not only uh, have fun, but also to socialize with other young, uh, working professionals. For senior citizens, it is especially suitable because uh, it is very engaging to the mind. It has a, a lot of engagements, according to, uh, to many studies in, in Japan and China, to the, not only to the left brain, but also the right brain as well. And it's, it also uh, intrigues the imagination at the same time. So for, for many of our audiences who are young at heart, I encourage you to give this a try and take a good look at the game of Wei Qi. Now, for the next question, is Wei Qi only a two-player game or can be played as a group? That's a very good question. Uh, now, in its, in its traditional design, Wei Qi is a, a game between one person to another person, both taking oppos opposing colors of black stone and white stones. Uh, but in some contemporary arrangements, we have uh, international events such as Pair Go. Pair Go is a very special arrangement where you have a team of two persons, one typically one gentleman and one lady, uh, teaming up together to play against a, an opposing team. And how it works is that uh, the, the pair gets to play a move turn by turn. So the lady will start first. So team A, lady from team A will start first, followed by lady from team B who will play the next move. And then a gentleman from team A will follow through. And then a gentleman from team B will play the next move. And then we'll move back to the lady from team A. And then, uh, so they'll take turns and complete the game together as a pair. So that is what we call pair go. We also have other arrangements like uh, four persons working together as a team, taking turns to play a move. Okay, we also have a group of people uh, working together, discussing the next move together before they send a representative to, to play a move. Uh, on, the, on the team's behalf. So there are a variety of uh, possibilities to play and have fun in a good game of Wei Qi, depending on the context of the event, as well as uh, the, the needs of, of, of what the, 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 the event requires. Okay, so I hope uh, this will allow you to have a better understanding of the game. Now, the next question, uh, is it quite similar to Otello? Mm, that's a very good question. In fact, many Singaporeans often misunderstood the game of Wei Qi as to the game of Otello because of its similarity in design. Uh, for Otello, you, you will often find that the stones right, are double-sided. You have one, one side with the white color and the, the other side with the black color. Now, the main intention was to flip the stone depending on the arrangements so that you can transform the color uh, to your, your, your color. And when you have more stones on the board, at the end of the game, you will win. That's, that's typically how we play Otello. But in the game of Weiqi, right, you don't flip the stones. You don't, you don't shift the stones, not to mention you don't flip the stones. You don't change color. You can only play stone by stone into the game. And if conditions allow, you can remove your opposing stones because uh, of the lack of liberties, as we have demonstrated earlier. 
So uh, for Atello, is the main intention is to transform the color of your opponent's stones so that you have more stones on in, in the game. Now for the game of Weiqi, right, it's all about surrounding your opponent's stones and surrounding territory. Typically, if you are able to control more than 50% of the board by surrounding territory and surrounding your opponent's stones, you will win the game of Weiqi. So that's the main idea and the main difference in design between Weiqi and Otello. So I hope that will answer your question also. Uh, I, I see that there's another question coming. Uh, very interesting. Are there any good learning groups where I can join? Uh, well, in Singapore Weiqi Association, we often organize uh, learning groups for children. We organize for uh, working adults. We also organize for youth as well. And we have uh, a, a many, many learning groups for senior citizens under strict supervision by our uh, trainers who are very experienced in managing uh, these kind of learning groups and engaging the participants through many activities such as uh, pair goal, such as uh, puzzles, such as uh, daily challenges, for example. So uh, if, you, if you are very interested in joining some of our learning groups, uh, which are often organized face-to-face uh, -face or sometimes online, uh, feel free to approach Singapore Weiqi Association or feel free to approach our contact. Later, we'll be sharing, that, uh, sharing those in our next slide. Okay, welcome you to join us. And next question, where can I purchase a set of Weiqi and how much? Uh, uh, the prices for a good equipment varies depending on the, the place and avenue where you intend to purchase your Weiqi set. Uh, typically in Singapore, uh, if we're lucky enough, we could find a, a good handy magnetic set in many bookstores, such as popular bookstores and uh, Kinokuniya uh, in Liang Court and Orchard Road. Uh, but uh, we, in, back in Singapore Weiji Association, we have a variety of uh, uh, stock of Weiji equipment suitable for different needs. If you are you're a beginner and you're just starting out learning the game, you want to get a smaller board, for example, you can find that in Singapore Weiji Association. Uh, if you're looking for a more professionally designed board, which is very thick, very big, and very luxurious in design, and you, you, if you are looking for a more uh, a, a beautifully uh, collection series for Weiji Stones, you can feel free to explore some of the online shops, such as Shopee or even uh, Taobao. Uh, some of the Chinese sites, where many of my students are also exploring as well as they progress up the, the technical ladder. So these are some of the areas that you can try. But for a start, I'll strongly en encourage you to explore the Singapore Weiqi Association website to find out more of, uh, for, for some of the Weiqi sets for beginners. Now, for Weiqi sets for beginners can go as cheap as $12 per set which includes the weighty stones as well as the weighty board itself. So it's very affordable and hopefully it can be rather encouraging to many of our new friends at home who are eager to, to try this out at, at home with your family and friends. And the next question we show, ah, I see that, are there any good websites to practice basic and advanced? Ah, that's a very good question. Uh, in fact, that's, that's the thing that we're very lucky uh, in this era and age. Because back in the old days, uh, we couldn't find anyone to practice with, not to mention to find a good set of Weiqi. Now today, we have many, many good websites to consider. We have websites such as gokgs.com. We can also play with the compu computer. Uh, the computer can practice with you at kosumi, C-O-S-U-M-I dot N-E-T. Uh, we also have uh, many, many websites like 101 Weiqi, 101 Weiqi. Dot net and so on. Uh, please feel free to Google the name uh, Weiqi websites and you will find a variety of options to consider. Even free applications uh, on your Apple Store or Android Play Store uh, as well. So you can try GoQuest. I am, it's one of my favorites and also uh, among my students. G-O-Q-U-E-S-T. Search for it on Play Store and, and App Store and you might have a lot of uh, fun playing with many players around the world. Okay, so number the next question, I see that there is, uh, are there places where we can play Weiqi with other hobbies? Uh, as I have introduced uh, earlier, 
As we have two main clubhouses in Singapore for Singapore Waste Association. We have one clubhouse back in Bishan, which is level two of Bishan Community Club. Okay. Uh, normally, it, it is open Monday to Sundays, every uh, Monday to Sunday afternoon. And we have one clubhouse at Middle Road, which is just beside Boogies Plus. The building is named ICD Enterprise House, level three. It is open every weekend uh, in afternoon to late evenings. But uh, unfortunately, currently, we are, we are not able to open our clubhouses to the public. So we are encouraging many of our friends and students as, as well as our members to practice online, uh, meet, meet up with your friends online and play uh, some good quality witty matches uh, through some of the websites that I've, I've introduced to you earlier on. Uh, we can also consider playing uh, Wei Qi at uh, some, some of the interest groups uh, in community clubs, okay? So hopefully that will answer your question. And is there a limit on the size of the board? Uh, technically speaking, you can play on any size of the board you like. As long as you're, you have the, the, the board with you, you can design your own board by drawing one big mahjong paper, for example. Uh, but technically, right? Uh, the official size is 19 by 19, which means there are 19 lines horizontally and 19 lines vertically. So crisscrossing each other. The demonstration board that I used earlier on was the 7 by 7 WC board, where you only had 7 lines straight and, and so on. So the 19 by 19 is the official size for, for a good game of WC, and it seems to make more sense to the ancient Chinese to, to make it 19 by 19. Because in the past, it used to be 8 by 8, 9 by 9, 13, 11 by 11, 13 by 13, even 17 by 17. And ultimately, by, late, by the late dynasties of uh, Song or even the Qing dynasty, they decided on 19 by 19. And that seems to be the, the, the main consensus from then on. Mm. So I hope that will answer your question. And I saw the news, Google AI player beat human. Is there possible for a human to win back the game. Yes, uh, back in 2016, one subsidiary company under Google, uh, Google DeepMind, uh, developed an artificial program called AlphaGo uh, that is able to master the, the perplexing world of Wei Qi. Now, uh, back in those days, right, we, we, uh, we had this understanding that the computer or the AI software or AI technology could not play a good game of Wei Qi with a strong professional player uh, due to its many possibilities. In fact, uh, according to the, the founder of Google DeepMind, Mr. Demis Hassabis, uh, the configurations or the number of configurations and possibilities in the typical 19 by 19 Wei Qi game is basically more than the atoms in the universe. So it's very complex and uh, it's, it's not easy for the computer to fully grasp the strategic aspect of the game, not to mention be a human professional player. But AlphaGo managed to overcome that by, by, by mimicking the thought process of a human player and ultimately beating a very famous world champion, Mr. Yi Se-do from Korea, a professional Naidan from Korea and 2017 beating a world champion, professional Naidan, Mr. Ke Jie from China, and therefore uh, ended the era of uh, hu human dominance in the game of Wei Qi. So now, uh, top professional players from China, Korea, and Japan are constantly challenging uh, modern artificial intelligence softwares, such as uh, fine art, such as uh, Go, Go C, for example, uh, and they are trying their best to challenge and hopefully beat the AI one day. But for now, it is still a process in the making. So let's see how it goes in the next few years to come. So which Chinese dynasty uh, did Wei Qi start in? Uh, this is a very difficult question to answer because uh, according to historians, even historians themselves could not really decide uh, how early was the founding of Wei Qi uh, really developed. Uh, but there were some tales and mythology records that Emperor Yao, as I introduced in the earlier part of the slides, uh, that he was the first Chinese ever recorded to have created and played a game with his son. Because he, he dreamt, he had a good dream as to uh, 
there, there were some deities uh, introducing this game to him. And therefore, upon waking up, he was, he was inspired and he created this surrounding game to play with his son. But there were also other uh, folk laws that uh, disputed that it was even earlier than that. So some, some historians may have uh, disputed that the history of Weiji may go way beyond 4,000 years. So it was a, this is indeed a very difficult question uh, beyond my expertise to answer you, unfortunately. But I believe uh, it will be before the Shang, uh, before the San Huang Wu Di. There's, there's this era of San Huang Wu Di. Uh, even before that, there will, there will be some uh, essence of which he designed and maybe some thought process of designing the game. Uh, because the, the whole game really, the, the whole origin, or origins of the game design was very, very, uh, in relate, very related to the essence of life to the ancient Chinese, where you have uh, the, the heavens, the universe, all trying to be included into the game design itself. So uh, I'm afraid I, 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 I have to skip that question because I couldn't really answer that in detail. And uh, I'm afraid we only have time for one last question. So this one will be for Weiji set 19 by 19, how many black and white stones will be in each set? Mm. Uh, typically, right, for 19 by 19, right, you have a total of 361 intersection points. So normally, uh, normally you will expect to see around 100 and between, uh, because due to the, the difference in production process, uh, you will normally see number of stones between 178 to 181 per box, for example. So sometimes you will see stones with 178 stones uh, or 180 stones per box. So that in case you fill up the entire board with stones, there will always be some intersection points uh, left. Okay, but typically you, you don't need to, to fill up all the intersection points on a 19 by 19 board. So if you have a set with 170 stones, for example, it should be good enough for us to start a good game on a 19 by 19 uh, altogether. All right, so I hope that will answer your question also. And uh, thank you so much for sending in all your questions and, and I really enjoyed reading through and hopefully my answers can help you understand the game better. So let's move on to the next slide. Now, if you find our talk useful, do like and share uh, these videos with your family and friends to help them pick up, pick up these useful uh, tips at their own pace and convenience. To learn more about Weiji course for beginners and other NSA courses by Nanyang Technological University, you can contact Ms. Lim at 6514-1398 or you can email us at cifp at ntu.edu.sg or visit our websites at ci.ntu.edu.sg or Singapore Weiji Association at weiji.org.sg. Please call 6478-5029 or visit nsa.org.sg to explore the many learning opportunities for seniors age 50 and above. Do like and follow the C3A Facebook page to be notified of new content in the, in the future. Thank you very much for your time today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the talk. My name is James Lee. I'm from Singapore Weiji Association. Uh, once again, thank you so much for your attention and I hope to see you next time in future. In the meanwhile, enjoy the game and see you soon. Have a good day. Bye-bye.